Just when we thought we knew everything there was to know about our universe, Voyager 1 made a shocking discovery that left scientists stunned. After venturing further than any spacecraft in history, the legendary Voyager 1 has turned back towards Earth and revealed something truly terrifying lurking in the depths of space. What could it be that Voyager 1 has found, and what does it mean for our understanding of the universe? Let's try to unravel what's happening. One of the marvels of the modern world is the entirety of the universe, from the darkest depths of the ocean to the brightest stars in the heavens and beyond. Researchers from every corner of the globe are pooling their resources to dissect its makeup and understand how it came into existence. These abnormalities have piqued the interest of scientists, particularly in the context of the solar system and outer space. As a result, a significant number of scientists have chosen to focus their professional lives on attempting to investigate and explain these anomalies. The amazing and multi-award winning technology that was developed and put to use in order to examine the vastness of our galaxy made it possible for a wider range of people to participate in enlightening and accessible explorations across the solar system. One example of these accomplishments is the Voyager, which is a well-known spacecraft that has been magnificently orbiting the Earth for the past 45 years. The Voyager 1 spacecraft is currently engaged in a perilous and mysterious journey through deep space. Both it and its sister project, Voyager 2, have made it beyond the boundaries of the solar system and into the interstellar medium, making them the human-made objects that are the furthest distance from our home planet. Voyager 2 is approximately 14.6 billion miles from Earth. When separated by such a great distance, anything may go wrong. To that, you must add the fact that these are aging vessels, as the Voyagers were first put into service in the 1970s. As a result, when Voyager 1 started sending home strange garbled nonsense instead of telemetry data in May of this year, NASA engineers could have been forgiven for calling it a day and pouring one out for possibly the most successful space mission in history. However, it is not how the NASA system operates. Instead, they began working on a method of diagnosing and repairing the record-breaking spacecraft that could be done remotely. They have achieved success now after a period of about four months. It appears as though nothing ever happened because Voyager 1 has been brought back online and is speaking normally with ground control. In point of fact, the problem was easy to solve. That is, it was as easy as anything could be given the fact that there was a communications lag of 22 hours in both directions and that there were billions of miles of space in between. What exactly took place with Voyager 1? The spaceship was currently traveling through interstellar space, looked to be performing astonishingly well and was sending vast amounts of data back to Earth. However, in the middle of May, the Attitude Articulation and Control System, also known as AACS, which was on board Voyager 1 and was responsible for maintaining its high-gain antenna pointing at Earth, began transmitting jumbled data to Earth rather than the regular notifications about the spacecraft's health and status. From our vantage point, it seemed as though the spaceship had developed something akin to an electric form of aphasia, which is a disorder that results in a loss of the ability to speak in a fluent manner. The data may appear to be randomly generated or does not reflect any possible state the AACS could be in, NASA noted in a statement from the time. Even more perplexing for the engineers was the fact that despite the strange status reports coming from the spacecraft, Voyager 1 looked to be in excellent condition. Because the radio signal from the ship remained strong and consistent, this indicated that the antenna was still pointing at Earth. This was in contrast to the configuration that the AACS said the antenna was in when communicating with NASA in the reports. In a similar fashion, the science systems on Voyager 1 continued to collect and send data as usual, despite the fact that the AACS was being affected by the same oddity. And whatever the issue was with the AACS, it did not trigger the fault prevention system that is supposed to put the spacecraft into safe mode whenever there is a problem. Engineers from NASA were able to successfully diagnose the issue, and now that they had a diagnosis, they could begin treatment. The problem was solved when it was discovered that the AACS had begun sending its telemetry data through an onboard computer that had been inoperable for a number of years. The dead computer tainted all of the data that was being sent out. The engineers at NASA only needed to issue a command to the AACS in order for it to use the appropriate computer 
to transmit its data down to Earth. However, there is still an issue. The next obstacle will be to determine the specific reason why the AACS decided to swap computers in the first place. According to NASA, the system most likely received an incorrect command from one of the other computers on board. Even though they say it is not a serious issue for the health of Voyager 1 at this time, the real cause will need to be identified and rectified in order to stop any strange occurrences in the future. When the Voyager project was initiated by NASA in 1977, it was managed by American researchers, and it was they who were responsible for the construction and programming of the two robotic interstellar probes that came to be known as Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. The favorable alignment of Jupiter and Saturn was the impetus for the launch of these probes, and they are designed to get as close to the planets as possible in order to transmit data back to Earth. After liftoff, a second option was considered, which was to send Voyager 2 on an exploratory mission to Neptune and Uranus, with the goal of transmitting information back to the scientists and engineers working for NASA. Three radioisotope thermoelectric generators provide power for the two robotic explorers who are traveling through interstellar space. RTGs are used to process the radioactive heat emitted by the decay of plutonium, which then results in the generation of energy. Both spacecraft were outfitted with 10 pieces of scientific equipment, including a pair of cameras for imaging, a magnetometer, a variety of spectrometers, and a detector for low-energy charged objects and particles that works in conjunction with high-energy cosmic rays. These instruments were installed in order to better understand the universe. The mission crew for the Voyager program had conducted 11 individual scientific experiments on each probe, making use of the spacecraft's communication systems. The initial cost of the Voyager program was an incredible $865 million, and the addition of the Voyager interstellar mission cost an extra $30 million, putting the grand total up to $895 million. Voyager was launched into space on September 5, 1977. Each vehicle is supplied with a golden gramophone record that contains information about the location of Earth, as well as instructions on how to play the record and how to operate the gramophone. This record, which is a gold-plated copper disc with a diameter of 30 centimeters and measures 30 centimeters in circumference, will serve as a time capsule in the event that any of the robotic interstellar probes are retrieved in the distant future. It will include an interplanetary message for any civilization, whether it be human or otherwise. The songs on this album were chosen by a committee that was directed by Carl Sagan and included Timothy Ferris as one of the essential team members. It was discovered in June 2012 that the spacecraft Voyager 1 had almost completely traversed the heliopause and was now moving toward the region of space known as interstellar space. Voyager 1 overtook the space probe Pioneer 10, which had been sent into space in 1972, on February 17, 1998, to become the most distant object ever created by humans. Pioneer 10 had been in space since 1972. By 2004, both of the Voyagers had successfully broken out from Pluto's orbit. When 2012 rolled around, the Voyagers were officially recognized as the spacecraft that had been operational the longest. Even though it has been in space for 45 years and is more than 14 billion miles from Earth, the Voyager 1 spacecraft is continuously uncovering previously unknown phenomena. According to the scientists, the spacecraft was able to pick up a very faint hum of interstellar space, which sounds similar to the sound of light rain. Plasma has been an important aspect of the mission of Voyager 1 ever since it was first launched. Lightning strikes were discovered in Jupiter's atmosphere by the probe, which also investigated how the solar wind slowed down near the outskirts of the solar system. Since 2012, researchers have been employing the spacecraft's equipment in order to investigate a region of space that has never been observed by humans before. At that time, Voyager 1 passed through the heliopause. The heliopause is the point at which the solar wind, which is a continuous flow of charged particles originating from the sun, is no longer powerful enough to keep back the interstellar medium that surrounds our neighborhood. Since 2012, when Voyager 1 began its journey away from the sun, scientists have been able to study the plasma that surrounds it. This region of the space between the stars is relatively silent most of the time. According to Stella koch Ocker, a doctorate student at Cornell University who leads the new research, it's very faint and monotone because it's in a narrow frequency bandwidth. 
This was said in a statement. We can make out the low, consistent hum of gas in the space between the stars. On the other hand, the solar wind has a tendency to push back every few years. Shock waves are what Voyager 1 detects when it comes in contact with these phenomena. James Cords, an astronomer at Cornell and the principal author of the study, made a similar analogy when he remarked, it's like noticing a burst of lightning during a thunderstorm. After then, it will gradually begin to drizzle again. Once upon a time, researchers believed that those shocks were the only way Voyager 1 could determine the density of the plasma that exists beyond our solar system. An astronomer from Cornell named Shami Chatterjee was quoted as saying the same thing in a same statement. She said, now we know that we don't need a lucky thing to happen with the sun to measure interstellar plasma. No matter what the sun is doing, Voyager is still able to send information back. This is the amount of matter I'm swimming through right now, the ship seems to be saying. And here it is at last. And here it is at last. And here it is at last. Voyager is extremely remote and will continue to behave in this manner indefinitely. The twin spacecraft Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 will continue their mission of exploring the cosmos forever. However, experts based on Earth are aware that the spacecraft's remaining time on its planet is limited. The plutonium fueling the spaceship's propulsion systems will run out at some point during this decade. At this time, Voyager 1 is more than 23.4 billion kilometers away from Earth and continuing to put additional distance between itself and our home planet. On the NASA website, you are able to monitor the increasing distance between the two Voyager spacecraft and view their present locations in orbit. The Voyager 1 spacecraft has spent the past 10 years traveling through interstellar space, well beyond the influence of the magnetic field of our Sun. The field has provided some shielding for the ship against cosmic rays and other forms of radiation from the interstellar medium in much the same way as the magnetic field of Earth provides some shielding against high-energy particles and radiation from the Sun. When one of those high-speed energetic particles impacts a computer chip, it can cause minor memory errors, which can mount up over time. Given that cosmic rays are known to interfere with electronics here on Earth, it is logical to think that this will also be a concern for the onboard computers of Voyager 1. A mystery like this is sort of par for the course at this stage of the Voyager mission, stated Suzanne Dodd, the project manager for Voyager 1 and 2, in a statement that was dated May. We will need to hold off making any decisions until we find out what new dangers Voyager will face on its journeys and what fresh discoveries are in store. That's all for the video today. Learn new things every day with us. And for that, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and give this video a thumbs up. And please, click the notification bell to receive notifications when we upload new videos and comment below what you think of this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in our next video.